This week, a movie I can actually show footage from. Imagine that fucking concept. Today we are reviewing the infamous 1999 film directed by Tamakichi Anaru, and that is Woman's Flesh, My Red Guts. And if that name sounds familiar, it's because he's also the director from Tumbling Doll of Flesh. But don't take that as a positive or a negative because this film is completely different. In fact, this one has a way more experimental and artistic twist than the previously mentioned film, which was basically porn interview, porn crying, death. It starts with what I assume are the police or paramedic taking pictures of the woman's corpse. We then hard cut to a woman in her bathroom getting ready for the day. She opens up her faucet and takes out her toothbrush. And she seems quite, um, attracted by the toothbrush. Because as soon as she takes it out, instead of, I don't know, brushing your teeth, she starts sucking the handle. I don't think we have the same morning routine. She then sits on her bath and decides that sucking the toothbrush isn't stimulating enough, so she puts it down her pants. And she starts very softly by just rubbing the handle of the toothbrush over her panties. We then get a flashback telling us the basic plot of the film. Her boyfriend broke up with her, which I don't understand why you would break up with such a sane looking woman. And that's where we start with my personal gripes with this film. If you've seen my violent shit review, you know I'm not a big fan of very cheap looking digital video effects. And this one utilizes those quite often. Like in this flashback scene, the director or someone involved with the production basically decided that, you know, black and white isn't enough, let's make it look even worse. So there's this high contrast, very pixelated, basically it's an eyesore and you don't see any details. It honestly looks worse than the shitty videos I used to make as a 10 year old with my 140p webcam and movie maker. Anyways, when our well-adjusted character is done with just rubbing it over the panties, she decides to shove the toothbrush in her vagina. And I guess she digs a little too deep and it starts to bleed quite a lot. Not only is her character mutilating herself and leaving blood everywhere, which will be a big pain in the ass for the cleanup crew, she's also leaving the tap running, which is very bad for the environment. Such a selfish woman. Right after she's done making a big mess, she gets hungry. And what's closest to her? Well, it's her finger. And she just starts gnawing on that for like five minutes. And it's honestly so goddamn disgusting. I loved it. We get some close-up shots and some very uncomfortable noises until she finally bites it off and spit it on the floor. And as if that wasn't enough, she just chokes herself until she passes out. We then get to see the scenes that this film is famous for, which is basically a dream sequence where she mutilates herself, even more than she did in real life. And how do I know it's a dream sequence? Well, basically she wakes up in the middle of nowhere and she still has her fingers and everything is intact. In this very strange room, we see an apple next to her. She decides to take off the skin of the apple and eat it. She then starts to fork herself, and no, that's not a euphemism, it's literal. She stabs herself with a fork until she bleeds from the legs. If you've ever tried to stab yourself with a fork, you'll see that it's very difficult. So instead, she takes out the knife and starts cutting her wrists. She then wakes up again, but this time in a blue room. We then get the titular red guts, as she seppukus herself and eats it out of her stomach. And during that time, the soundtrack makes sure to make us very uncomfortable. And I actually have to point out that the dream sequences are the first time we get a soundtrack. Because when she was in the bathroom, that was reality, so there was no soundtrack to that. But since she's in nightmare mode, we get some very uncomfortable noises. I'd like to describe the scene more in detail, but it's quite literally just her eating her guts. And they look yummy, because that just looks like sausage links. The big finale, since this is from the same director as Tumbling Doll of Flesh, is the woman cutting off her tongue. Which all the effects were made by the director and I think he had one assistant, and it just looks like the same type of effects as there were in Tumbling Doll of Flesh. We then go back to reality where the woman is passed out alone in her bathroom and then the movie ends. 
So how did I like my second Amaru experience? This one was honestly very intriguing. I don't really want to say great, good or not bad, because I really still have to process what I just seen. My biggest gripe with this film are really the visual effects, and by that I mean the awful digital looking overlays, because they are present throughout the entire dream sequences which are the highlight of the film. They are so surreal and the music makes you so uncomfortable, and the effects are decent, they're not great, but honestly you really get into them because the film is so gosh darn weird. The actress, because she's the only one we really see, the boyfriend is probably there for like 5 seconds, does a very good job. She plays this character very well, she has this dead stare in the eye, this very sociopathic kind of look, and it's just a pleasure to watch. You can clearly see the impact on the future generations of filmmakers this film had, i.e. C. Houston with portraits of Andrea Palmer and Gaia Spears with difficulty breathing. So I didn't really fall in love with this film, but I fell in love with the concept and the impact it had on future generations. You always have to respect the OGs and this film really has my respect. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this and see you guys next time.